When everything they tell you is wrong And you find out they lied to you for so long When you get the feeling you don't belong Just elevate When you're feeling a little down and out And there's no one to help you turn around All you wanna do is stomp and scream and shout Just elevate Just elevate, just elevate When you start thinking of things that you hate Just elevate, release your mind and meditate You know what I say We've been frantically trying to reach you, dude. Look, man, I've got certain information, all right? Certain things have come to light, and, you know, has it ever occurred to you that uh, instead of, uh, you know, running around uh, uh, blaming me, you know, given the nature of all this new shit, you know, it, it, this could be a, a, a lot more uh, 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 complex. I mean, it's not just, it might not be just such a simple, uh, you know? What in God's holy name are you blathering about? 
Well, I'll tell you what I'm blathering about. I've got information, man. New shit has come to light. Good morning guys, it's Friday, August the 30th, 2019 and it's almost 10 o'clock in the morning. Welcome to podcast number 33, which I've entitled The Portal. And I've used this title mainly because it's the traditional title used to explain what happens when somebody is entering into the process of uh, authentic hermetic initiation. So what I'm going to talk about this morning is the subject of what happens during and around the process of being accepted by an authentic hermetic teacher into the process of authentic hermetic initiatory training. What are the requirements? What is the realistic expectation of being accepted by an authentic teacher? What are the qualifications that are required by an aspirant, a seeker, who desires to enter into training. I've given this lecture a number of times and most people who are aware of what I'm going to talk about usually eagerly await to hear me describe the steps or processes or information that is going to help them become involved in authentic training. And I can tell you right now that for most people, the reality of the situation is not a welcome one. That most people are very disappointed by the information that I'm going to give about the reality of becoming involved in initiatory training. So of all of the discussions or lectures that I've given on the subject of authentic hermetic initiation, this first one is the one which is greeted eventually with the least amount of enthusiasm <clears throat> because um, it's the kind of thing that not only people don't expect to hear but it's what they it's the kind of thing that they don't want to hear either and i'm about to explain why that is there is a culture in modern, popular, western occultism which encourages seekers or aspirants who desire spiritual self-development and remember that that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about magic for magic's sake or laboratory alchemy just for the sake of mucking around with chemicals and glassware. We're specifically talking here about the journey, the struggle for personal spiritual self-development. That culture encourages people to believe that simply anybody who desires to get involved in personal spiritual self-development has a right to a teacher and has the right to enter into effective authentic initiatory training and that belief, that generalization, is not at all true. It is not the case that anybody who simply wants spiritual self-development can have it. 
and the reason for this is something that not many people who have ever bothered to study the Western esoteric tradition have ever stumbled across or have considered in their own mind and gone looking for information on. So here is the first rule, if you like, about what kind of qualifications are required in order to get involved in authentic, serious, initiatory training in the Western tradition. And that first rule is that not every human being on the face of the planet is ready for that training and not everybody who believes that they are ready or who simply desires to have that training is in a position to actually make effective use of that training if they got it. In other words, only a very small number of people who are alive at any one time in history are actually ready and prepared for authentic training. And the reason for this is simple, but as I've said, very little known. And the authoritative text which describes to us the conditions of this situation is found in the realm of Kabbalah. Anybody who studied Kabbalah in the Western tradition, in other words, Hermetic Kabbalah, will understand that the Old Testament and to a similar degree the New Testaments of the Bible are Kabbalistic documents. That the individuals who wrote those documents originally were Kabbalists whether they were rabbis or whether they were some other kind of organized society of individuals before the concept of a rabbi um, was first created they were sages or initiates or trained occultists and for this reason the Old Testament and the New Testament are full of Kabbalistic ciphers, uh, passages, descriptions of things, and uh, various Kabbalistic concepts and philosophy. And also, uh, anyone who studied Kabbalah in the Hermetic tradition will know that Kabbalism is considered one of the hermetic sciences and I teach specifically that Kabbalism is the branch of hermetism which teaches us fundamentally about esoteric psychology. So what this means is that when we join the dots we look at the Old Testament of the Bible, we can consider it to be a hermetic document that was um, authored by Kabbalists. And that it is hermetic because the Hebrew Kabbalah stems originally from the Sumerian and Egyptian traditions, both of which were or are hermetic in nature. That means that the concepts in the Old Testament are hermetic concepts and can be applied directly to hermetic thought. And when we consider uh, the initiatory journey, a lot of the Kabbalistic hermetic concepts that are in the Old Testament are concepts that are presented as stories and allegories and um, metaphors about the initiatory journey. And that's important because um, when we read unusual passages in the Old Testament, 
um, things which don't seem to be literal history, we can know as Hermetic um, students that these passages often refer to um, esoteric secrets. They're, they are veiled metaphorical or allegorical descriptions of Hermetic or Kabbalistic secrets. So let's look now at the third chapter of Genesis. And I think we are looking for verse 22, chapter 3. And this is what we're told. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Verse 23. So the Lord God banished him, that's mankind, from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. In other words, he was taken out of Eden and um, inserted into the cycle of reincarnation in the physical world. Verse 24, which is the last verse of chapter 3. After he drove man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim, and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. I encourage um, anyone who's interested in properly understanding what I'm going to talk about here about the qualifications for entering into authentic initiation to have a good look at verse 22, 23 and 24 of chapter 3 of Genesis and think carefully about what is said there in relation to what I'm about to discuss now. So this is the basic esoteric version of the backstory of those three verses. That mankind, for whatever reason, was encouraged by the serpent to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Hermetic tradition teaches that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is physical life, um, being incarnate, trapped in the cycle of reincarnation into physical reality. And originally God had told humanity, Adam and Eve, that they were not to eat of that tree. And then in verse 23, 22, 23 and 24, we're told that because humanity had done that, and therefore had become like the gods, the Elohim, that just in case man decided to break the other rule that God made, which was not to eat of the tree of life, God booted Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden and trapped them in physical reality, not permanently, but on a long-term basis. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil is reincarnatory re experience in physical life and the tree of knowledge uh, the tree of life is a metaphor for um, occult knowledge specifically relating to the process of initiation because the process of initiation is a process which rescues a person out of the incarnatory experience. One of the key things about reincarnation is death. When you are born into physical life, there's one thing for sure, you're going to die eventually. Everybody is going to die. Even alchemists who ingest the elixir of life may extend their longevity, but they will still eventually die. Everything which is born here dies eventually. But the tree of life is 
a school or a process or the teaching which allows an individual to escape the cycle of reincarnation and shift out of the process of rebirth into the realm of um, the supernals on the tree of life what we would call the higher functions in Heronim and heaven or paradise if you like for more generalized popular concept of um, the better levels of the afterlife so what the Elohim told Adam and Eve was being reincarnated causes us to learn and understand the mechanics of good and evil in other words of binary existence and that learning the mechanics of good and evil is what makes somebody a god which gives them the knowledge of the Elohim in other words spending an extended passage of time constantly reincarnating into physical reality and going through all of the experiences which life and the physical world um, forces upon us what we slowly do is accumulate a storehouse of knowledge in our soul and our unconscious memory about the machinery which runs physical reality which is binary mechanics what I call binary mechanics and that <clears throat> over an extended period of time of being reincarnated here and having all that information stored it affects our awareness we begin to um, understand what it is that creates and maintains this physical reality and that level of understanding which Hermetists call the vision of Hermes being able to see physical reality and understand what it is that creates and maintains this reality the true mechanics of the universe the physical universe is the vision of the Elohim, the gods of the Old Testament, of the early Old Testament. Um, so Adam and Eve, having eaten of the fruit of the knowledge tree of knowledge of good and evil, were evolving into a God awareness. And then the next, next logical step for them would be to eat of the tree of life, which is basically to become initiated and therefore live forever become eternal beings in the higher realms of the afterlife so in order to stop them from making that shift too early the Elohim trapped humanity into physical reincarnation in order that they learn their lesson properly about binary mechanics and that they do things in a proper way when it comes to eating the fruit of the tree of life now logic dictates that if there is a reason for us being here in physical reality and if beings who are more intelligent than us and more powerful than us and who have control over our existence at the level of our soul and they would have to have that in order to be able to force us to be trapped in the reincarnatory experience if these things are true and that they put us here for a reason and that reason is an education about good and evil or binary mechanics then logic dictates simple logic dictates that you're not getting out of here until you've completed that education 
then the second concept that initiation was specifically designed as a part of nature as the exit door from the reincarnatory experience what that means then logically is that not just anybody can enter into authentic effective initiatory training the only people who can enter into that training are people who have completed the reason for being here in the first place now if you didn't get your head around what I just said I suggest that you back this up a little bit and listen to what I've just said again until it's in your nut because these are the core rules of being a true aspirant who desires to enter the path of initiatory training that that training is only going to work for you you're only going to be successful in it in the long term as long as you have completed your soul education that you have come here for in physical existence and education in how binary mechanics works how it operates how it creates and maintains this world so I know the next question that will arise in most people's minds who are capable of um, uh, following the dialogue here the narrative is okay well how do I know whether I have reached the point where I have completed my education in temporal mechanics in the mechanics of binary existence how do I know the reality is consciously you in 99.999 percent of cases you can't know because what we're talking about here is an education for the soul not an education for the conscious mind what Kabbalists call the Ruach or the thinking mind the objective mind the mind which is focused on this world and says that's a tree that's an orange this is a railing there's the sky there's the earth that's your Ruach making all those observations putting labels on them and having an idea about what each of these things mean lifetimes and lifetimes of incarnatory experience accumulating all the knowledge of those lives in our unconscious which is what happens it's what in the Eastern world they call the Akashic records and in the Hermetic tradition we call it the anima mundi the memory of nature um, that information that we're storing in our unconscious is not accessible directly by our conscious thinking mind the mind that observes outer reality so you can't look at the accumulated knowledge and experience of hundreds and thousands of lives incarnations and calculate yourself whether or not you're ready for initiatory experience for a start you would have to know from the start when you begin to calculate even if you could see all that knowledge you would have to understand uh, what the agenda is here exactly what the measure of enough experience is and of course you don't have that knowledge in your Ruach all your Ruach knows about is the physical world as it sees it and what it believes about it and that is not necessarily the truth so what is the measure then how does a person work out whether or not they are ready for um, entering in upon the portal of the temple of the mysteries which is the traditional modernish hermetic way of talking about 
beginning initiatory training, entering in upon the portal of the Temple of the Mysteries. <clears throat> the way I explain that situation is called entering in through the first gate. How do we know that we are ready for that? And the fact is, personally ourselves, we don't know. What we need is an expert. In the same way that if you were learning to be a carpenter, or a boat builder, or a motorcycle mechanic, how do you know when you have learned enough to carry out that job effectively? And for most people, they can't know without a teacher assessing how much they have learned, how much you have learned, um, and then uh, giving you the seal of approval or saying you haven't learned enough or you don't understand enough about being a boat builder or a mechanic in order to carry out that job properly. And with initiation, it's no different. In order for anybody to assess another individual or themselves about whether or not they're ready for hermetic initiation, an expert is required. Somebody who knows what initiation is for a start, and most aspirants do not know that. Most people who desire initiation have no idea what initiation really is or what it will involve. They may have basic intellectual concept about the major waypoints on the journey, but you only really know what the experience is going to be like by going through it, which is why a teacher is an expert when it comes to evaluating the qualification of a candidate, of an aspirant, who becomes a candidate to the mysteries. Uh, because the teacher has gone through the experience, knows what is required, and can look at the individual after becoming familiar with that person's personality through having conversations with them, maybe explaining concepts and ideas to them and seeing how well they understand or assimilate those concepts and ideas and then the teacher can look at that person and think well that guy is definitely not going to survive five minutes inside of initiatory training because he's not intelligent enough or he has no patience or he's dishonest or he's got the wrong reasons for wanting to be initiated or whatever there's there is any number of reasons why um, a person is not qualified to be a candidate to the mysteries and it's different for every individual exactly what it is that they themselves have not completed where their incarnatory education is concerned uh, <clears throat> But a teacher can also look at somebody and think to themselves, well, this guy is honest, he's intelligent enough, when I discuss things with him, he is good at communicating, he has a good grasp of the basic or fundamental concepts that are necessary to understand where initiatory training is concerned. He's patient, he's eager, and he seriously knows what he's getting himself into and desires to get himself into it even though he knows what it will involve. So there's also a, a grey ground between the obviously not ready and obviously ready individuals where there are lots of people who you can't really tell from a short time of uh, interacting with them whether they're ready, definitely ready or definitely not ready. And that grey area of individuals, for the most part, the only thing that can uh, reliably decide whether or not they're going to be ready for training is for them to actually enter training and attempt to succeed in the process. And then the actual process itself, the requirements of the process of initiatory training, which I'm going to talk about in the coming podcasts, uh, will 
weed out the people who are not strong enough or who are not focused enough or who are dishonest or who are doing it for the wrong reasons or who are not simply not clever enough to um, work their way through it. All of these things, honesty, being clever enough, understanding the concepts that are involved, all of these are products of long-term reincarnation. Coming back here time and time and time and time again makes our souls more clever, makes us more honest, and increases in us the urge for initiation and spiritual self-development. Um, gives us the faculty for being able to understand difficult and often abstract concepts which are part of the initiation experience. Give us patience and hunger for the goal which will cause us to stick to training and continue to carry out the exercises properly even when it's difficult. All of these things are the product of long-term in involvement in reincarnatory cycle. So we can tell when somebody's not ready, when somebody has not learned enough from their initiatory experience because for want of a better metaphor, they're like children who don't really understand things properly and who have um, problems with their personalities with their character, <clears throat> things like they're prideful, arrogant, they think that telling lies is a productive life skill that will get them the kinds of things that they believe that they need. Um, they, their intellectual faculties are not properly developed. They have a very narrow view of the reality of what life is about, like we know that children, for example, have no concept of what working for a living is like. We know that small children, for example, have no concept of what loyalty and honesty in a loving relationship with another human being requires from a productive human being. And it's the same with initiates, or should I say aspirants who become candidates or who desire to become candidates to the mysteries. They will often say that they understand the kinds of ideas that a teacher will explain about what is required in initiatory training but when it actually comes to applying those ideas to the student um, introducing the student to the environment of initiatory training um, they immediately show that they simply can't stand up to the rigors of how they need to think how to deal with their emotions how to deal with the dysfunctional side of their personality, how to interact productively with the teacher, how to communicate productively with the teacher, how to be loyal to the teacher and to the training situation, that they simply lack all of these or a large chunk of these kinds of advanced personality characteristics and therefore cannot succeed in initiatory training. So. What, we, what, what, what I was talking about here was that grey area between people who are obviously not ready and people who, when you, as an experienced and expert teacher, who can look at and say, yeah, that guy has a very good chance of succeeding in training. In the middle between those two is that grey area where there are a lot of people who it's very difficult to tell whether they are ready or not without actually introducing them to the process and attempting to take them through and then seeing how they react to the process. So at the beginning of this podcast I said that the reality of approaching and desiring entrance into the realm of authentic hermetic initiation, the reality of it is something that most people don't want to know. Most occultists want to believe that anybody can enter esoteric training and succeed as long as they, I don't know, apply themselves to it or just simply because they want it. Most students that I have had over the years simply think it's their right, it's their birthright 
to be accepted into training if they find a teacher and that somehow mysteriously without really making any effort at all or having the right personality characteristics that they're just going to succeed like it's a gift that um, God is offering anybody who asks for it and the reality is that is simply not true that you have to be ready to withstand the struggle of initiation and this is the reality of what initiation is about it's not Disneyland for spiritually desiring people it's not a party or a fun ride where everything suddenly becomes hippie shit initiatory training is difficult and it is a struggle and it is very strict on the individual and the good side the beneficial results the prize does not come until the end after the struggle is dealt with properly and this is the thing that eliminates most people from the equation of whether or not they are ready and prepared for training so as I was saying the real initiatory experience is not Disneyland everything doesn't automatically get better right away and more deeply spiritual the moment you begin your training it's exactly the opposite in order to develop towards the point of attaining knowledge and conversation with the higher genius you have to face up to the dysfunctional side of your personality and the less evolved your soul is the less mature that your soul is the more dysfunctional your in your present incarnatory experience is and there becomes a point where the level of your dysfunction in any particular incarnation where you may decide that you want to be involved in initiatory training is too much to work on in one lifetime and so it's either going to involve a number of lifetimes of spiritual training in order to break that dysfunction or you're going to have to still live through a number of lifetimes experience in order to develop your binary mechanics understanding enough to overcome that dysfunction in future lives and in order not to get yourself in as much trouble so that when you arrive in a lifetime when you're ready to begin uh, proper authentic effective initiatory training that the amount of fix that you require to yourself in order to properly attain knowledge and conversation with the higher genius the amount of fix that you require can be dealt with in one training lifetime and that is the bottom line really you can't be initiated in one lifetime if you're if the dysfunctional nature of your psyche is more than can be dealt with in one lifetime you have to arrive in a life where you have where you're clever enough and intuitive enough and productively instinctual enough to deal with life's problems the things that are put before you in a productive manner and enough of a productive manner that when you find yourself standing at the portal to the temple of the mysteries metaphorically speaking that when you enter into training that that training can 
fix you enough to be ready for that first stage at the end of initiation that we call knowledge and conversation with the higher genius. Certainly one of the things that can uh, speed up your readiness or preparedness is to get into psychotherapy early enough in your life to stop you from not only creating more trouble for yourself in your life by making bad decisions and by attracting uh, destructive situations to yourself but to also fix as much of your um, present dysfunction as possible so that by the time that you begin training that uh, your teacher's job is not as not so arduous that um, it can't be completed in a single lifetime or within a productive span of time during that one lifetime because initiation the definite the definition of the term initiation is a new beginning a beginning and we must remember that initiation isn't about an entire lifetime's effort it is just the beginning of the full esoteric journey it's like kindergarten in the bigger picture when a person has been successful as an initiate then there is a job to do and that job usually needs to be completed by the end of that same lifetime where initiation was entered into there's no point in being initiated and then dropping dead the point in being initiated is so that you can actually partake in a proper spiritual life the initiation itself is not the end goal it's the beginning of the process and this is another mistake that a lot of people make that they think initiation is a lifelong process or several lifetimes process and that is a, a concept that is um, uh, perpetuated within the popular level of western esoteric culture and pop eastern occultism or mysticism as well that you enter upon the path of initiation and it's going to take at least a whole life but probably several lifetimes in a row that's not true initiation is a very quick process for people who are actually ready for it and it only takes a matter of months to get through the initial training when you start talking about years and years or lifetimes we're not talking about initiation anymore we're talking about you having not completed the reason why you were born here in the first place and that is interfering with a quick and effective initiatory training so let's sum up what I've said here about the qualifications for getting into authentic effective initiatory training at a time when you can succeed in it I'm using all these words carefully and pronouncing them carefully because each of these words is describing the situation exactly authentic initiation which is effective on you and which you therefore can be successful in because you are actually ready for it when initiation doesn't work for you it's because you're not ready and what is the measure of readiness so the first rule is that we are all here for a reason and that is to be soaked immersed in this reality enough times that the dynamics of being alive and having to work and deal with people deal with suffering deal with joy waking up every morning and having to go to work and all this kind of thing that the all the lessons that are learned from that and the essence of those lessons impresses or stamps upon our soul an education 
about temporal mechanics, the way a binary reality works. And there's a very good reason why gods or the Elohim need to know how binary mechanics work. But I'm not going to get into that here because that is a whole other complex subject to discuss. And that we get this snippet of information, which is very rare, which you don't find people talking about, which many authors on the thousands and thousands of books on Western esoteric tradition virtually never discuss. And that is that little passage in the Old Testament, verses 22, 23 and 24, chapter 3 of Genesis, where we're told, in a broad sense, without going into any kind of detail about what actually might have happened there, that mankind attempted to be like the Elohim, whatever they were. And I think we can pretty much agree, if we've done enough research, that the Elohim are not God, that they are some kind of advanced beings that interacted with human, humanity for some reason. That human beings decided that they wanted to be like the Elohim, so they got themselves into a situation where an education to become like the Elohim uh, was provided to them and that the Old Testament calls that knowledge, eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and that because they did that the Elohim said no 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 just in case you attempt now to become an initiate or what is metaphorically referred to as eating of the tree of life um, we are going to do something here to force you to have to stay in temporal reality long enough to be properly educated about it so that when you are then ready to eat of the tree of life you will actually be ready because of the maturity of your soul through the experiences in binary reality. So in order, so what the Old Testament said about that is that basically human awareness was barred from the higher levels of the afterlife, from paradise or heaven or the supernal triad as Kabbalists would call it, and that particular entities or intelligences were given the job of maintaining that barring process to guard the gate to the mysteries that there were specific intelligences that were given the job to stop people getting into that part of the garden where the tree of life is and eating of its fruit before they were ready so you can't just simply con your way out of reincarnation sneak into authentic initiation and succeed in it because for a start there is a mechanism in nature designed by some higher functioning intelligences which actually guards the gate to the mysteries which actually stops or bars people from entering into and succeeding in initiation until they are actually soul mature enough to succeed in the process. And this is going to be the subject of my next podcast. Here we talked about the qualifications for being an aspirant being someone who's seeking after initiation and becoming a candidate somebody who a teacher an authentic teacher is going to accept as a student that was the subject of today the subject in the next podcast is going to be about 
the mechanism or entity that is placed by the higher powers at the gate to the mysteries to stop just anybody gate crashing initiation because that's the next big concept there actually is an intelligent force which is imbued with the skills of stopping the immature soul from entering into the hermetic mysteries So I don't know what happened to the rain, it's still cloudy but it's getting very warm and that is the end of today's podcast, thanks very much for watching, the, the weather is beginning to improve now because it's spring here in the southern hemisphere as from officially from the Sunday, uh, daylight savings. Uh, because the weather's improving, it also means that um, it gives me better opportunities to be filming outdoors where I prefer to be filming. I've also got a truckload of new camera equipment to be trying out and to be taking with me on outdoor excursions and to be filming away from my home more often. Um, and I'm in the process of learning that equipment now um, so that's something else to look forward to it's the next stage in improving my uh, YouTube podcasts um, there are a couple of announcements for me to make here one of them is I just gave an interview yesterday to Thoth Hermes podcasts um, uh, about an hour long interview very good especially for beginners who are um, new to approaching the kind of ideas that I present here if anyone is interested in having a listen to that podcast uh, which should be being published this Sunday a couple of days away now um, I'll put the link in the description below to get access to that podcast the other announcement I have to make is that I'm probably going to make a video um, either between this podcast and the next one or between the next one and the one after that about um, a new project that we're beginning um, to create an educational facility for training new students and we're calling that facility the Herodom college and you can access the website where we're um, constructing that educational portal now at heridomcollege.org and I'll put that link below as well uh, there's a lot of work to do to get that up and running but I will be um, making a short video describing what Herodom College is all about and what it offers sometime within the next few podcasts as a kind of an introduction to the concept. Sorry Smokey, you were over the line, that's a foul. Smokey, this is not NOM, this is bowling, there are rules. Hey, this is a league game. This determines who enters the next round robin. Am I wrong? When everything they tell you is wrong And you find out they lied to you for so long When you get the feeling you don't belong Just elevate When you're feeling a little down and out And there's no one to help you turn around All you want to do is stomp and scream and shout Just elevate Just elevate just elevate when you start thinking of things that you hate. Just elevate, release your mind.